In this lecture, we will learn how to use the mates coincident, parallel, and perpendicular. Those mates are the same ones we used in sketching, with the exception that we are applying them in a three-dimensional space, compared to the three-dimensional sketch. We will be making the following assembly, which consists of four different parts. So let's go ahead and start by adding the parts to the assembly file. You can download all the parts from the download section. We will start by opening a new assembly file. So we're going to new and we're going to open a new assembly file. And now we're going to add all the four parts. So we're going to browse and we're going to see the parts. We're going to start by adding the base part. This part is going to be fixed. And for that, we are going to choose the part block. So here's the block. I'm going to click and we have our block. This part is fixed. Now let's go ahead and add the other parts. We're going to insert components, browse, and then add the other three parts, rectangle, square, and triangle. We're going to open, and then we're going to click, click, and click. Now we have all the parts added to the assembly. Now we can start applying mates to have the parts where we want them to be. If you notice, if I click and hold in this rectangular shape, it will be moving. We want it to be fixed in this slot right here. So we're going to meet, and then we're going to start applying relations. One relation we can easily conclude is that the upper surface of this rectangle is coincident with the upper surface of the block. So I'll go ahead and select those two upper surfaces and then apply the coincident relation. Notice that as soon as you select the surfaces, SolidWorks automatically assume a relation. In this case, it automatically assumed the relation coincident. You can always change it to another mate. So if I change this to perpendicular, you're going to notice that the two surfaces change to become perpendicular to each other. If I do parallel, it's the same thing. However, now I want them to be coincident. So I'm going to click OK, and now they're coincident. If I click on the block and I start moving it, you will notice it still moves, keeping the relation between the two faces. Let's go ahead and apply another thing. If I click on this vertex here, and then I click on this other vertex here, we will get the relation coincident. This relation fits for us, so I'm going to click OK. Now if I click and hold in the rectangle and I start moving the mouse, you will notice the new restraints we're having. So let's go ahead and restrain that even further. I am going to apply another relation between this other vertex here and the other vertex in the block. Again, we want them to be coincident, so we're going to click OK. And now we have this rectangular shape where we want it to be. Now let's go ahead and start restraining the triangle. Before that, let me show you the move components command. So if we exit the mate, in the top you're going to see move components. If we click on it, you can move a component. This is the same movement you get if you just click and move. But if you drop down the menu, you will see rotate components. And if you click on it, you can rotate the components. Just to give you a better idea how it looks like. So let's go back to mates. For this triangle, I want this top surface to be parallel to this top surface of the block. So if I click here, and I click here, and I can choose parallel, 
and now the two surfaces are parallel. So if I exit mates and I go back to rotate components, you will notice that you can only rotate the components while keeping the two faces parallel to each other. So let's go back to mate. Another mate that I can apply to restrain this triangle is to have this face here perpendicular to this face here. So I'm going to the standard mates and choose perpendicular and then click OK. Now if I go ahead and try to rotate the triangle you will notice that it doesn't really rotate because the mates we applied are enough for it to be fixed in that position. Now let's go ahead and try restraining it even more. So I'm going back to mate then I'm going to select this edge here and I will select this edge and I will have them coincident. I'm going to click OK. Now you can see that the only movement we can do to the triangle is to move it up and down. Let's go ahead and restrain that further. I'm going to select this upper face and then the upper face of the block and I will have those coincident. Click OK and we have already constrained the triangle. So if I click and hold on the triangle and I try to move it, it's not going to move anywhere. If I exit the mates and look at the design tree, you will notice that next to the block there is the letter F, which means it's fixed. Next to the square there is a minus sign, which means it's not defined yet. So if I click on the square, I can still move it. Both the triangle and the rectangle do not have anything beside them, which means they are fixed in position using the mates we applied. To restrain this rectangular and triangular shapes, we have used the relations coincident, parallel, and perpendicular. While we are here, go ahead and practice those mates to restrain the blue square shape.